here's an exercise in scheduling, a subject that genetic algorithms are very good at. This can be planning a production line, creating a work schedule for an urgent engineering project, allocation of resources in emergencies, or as in our case, preparing a weekly schedule for controllers working shifts in a control tower. Five air traffic controllers are working in a control tower of a small airport. The tower is manned 24-7 in three shifts. The morning shift needs one controller in the tower. The afternoon is busier, so there's a need for two controllers. One controller is needed for the night shift. Now, after a morning or afternoon shift, the controller is entitled to a rest of one shift, and after a night shift, a rest for a whole day. Our mission is, planning a weekly schedule for all five controllers. It's definitely a tall order. Few would argue that this is outside the scope of any human to solve. So again, we revert to genetic algorithms. Let's set the program up, keeping the same order as in our intro video. First we define the chromosome, then the fitness function, and finally the constraints. How about this? Our chromosome will be one long binary string, with a separate gene for each shift, for every controller, over a whole week. Recall that chromosomes of genetic algorithms should resemble the solution, so we think this arrangement is perfect. When the run is over, each row will simply be the weekly schedule of the controller next to it. At the top you can see that we have a total of 105 binary digits. For those of us who still have doubts about the ability of humans to solve this case, the number of combinations to check here comes out as 105 factorial, or 1.08 to the power 168. Clearly a challenge, even for a large computer. Next, we need a fitness function. Often fitness functions are meant to minimize a cost or maximize a return. However, here we have a special case. You see, the controllers earn a monthly salary, so they're not paid per hour or per shift. The control tower doesn't generate revenues, its costs are fixed, and these have no connection whatsoever to the controller's schedule. So what should our fitness function look like? Let's think carefully. What is really a good schedule? What's the difference between a good schedule and a bad schedule? Wait, if we are asking this question, does that mean that the genetic algorithm may not be able to give us a 100% flawless solution? Absolutely. Because for example, how do we know that five controllers are enough to meet the requirements? The answer is, we don't not yet. So, if there's no guarantee that the genetic algorithm will reach a flawless schedule, then let's define the fitness function to guide the algorithm towards the best schedule it can plan. This is achievable if we define a penalty for schedule violations, and let the fitness function be the cumulative sum of all the penalties of a specific solution. If we then direct the algorithm to minimize that fitness function hence minimize violations, we will obtain the best achievable plan under the circumstances. Now, what constitutes a violation? We see four cases. 1. A no-show in the tower. 2. Overbooking in the tower. 3. Not enough resting time. 4. Too much resting time. Of these, number 1, a no-show in the tower, cannot be tolerated, so we will define it as a hard constraint. Insufficient resting time, while not as severe as a control tower without controllers, will also be regarded as a hard constraint. Of the remaining two, excess of controllers in the tower, and more rest time than the minimums, are not really severe violations, but it's still a good idea to regard them as soft constraints, and penalize the fitness function proportionally when they occur. Turning these ideas into action, we will define our fitness function as a cumulative sum of the penalties over 7 by 3 equals 21 shifts, with penalty of each shift being proportional to the number of unnecessary people in the tower. And a similar, proportional penalty could be added for longer than minimum resting time, in case we want to add also that factor to our run. We're done defining the chromosome, fitness function and constraints, and it's time to run the algorithm. Here's the run on the right. The results seem to be good and we have a plan. The truth is, we didn't get any violations in this run. So perhaps it's worthwhile running it again with fewer controllers, and see if we can save the expense of a salary or two. So we tried that. 
here it is with just four controllers. We didn't reach a perfect plan, the best it could do was seven violations. Going down to three people, we have a steeper initial climb, but the best the program could do was 41 violations. Now, what would happen if we add one person so have six instead of five? Brown line, quicker convergence to a solution, but of course can't do better than zero violations, which we already got with five controllers. Again, we find it remarkable that genetic algorithms are so flexible and adaptable. We could run the program with any number of controllers that we wanted. All that happened was that we were informed about violations of constraints. Most other software tools would have returned with a crashed program, and or an error, stating something to the effect of, number of controllers does not match allocated shifts. Not genetic algorithms.